uh, he's asking, is it possible to make ceramic lamination with coating paste inside? So no, this, it is interesting. I, I was I was looking at that question earlier. So in the past, I've asked that question and asked whether we could actually uh, laminate uh, effectively the uh, ceramic between two panes. I've avoided it in the past and tended to either go for an interlayer, um, just because you can't tell what this ceramic is going to do. And I know I've asked in the past, if it's an IGU, then obviously it can sit within the cavity. But then again, you need to check the um, thermal stress potential um, with that. And especially for the darker colors where we found that actually the, the temperature gets so hot in that, um, in that unit that, that it's, it's actually not tenable to, to work. So I personally, I, I find the, the whole glass industry is fascinating because things change constantly. And a question we may ask one year, the next year, they've got a solution. So I think it's really important for, for us all to keep in touch with the supply chain, constantly ask the questions, because I also think what's so important, I used to speak to, you know, Sangaban, AGC, Guardian, and say, these are the questions we're asking as consultants, can you solve them for us? So if you ask enough times, they'll find it for you. <laughs> so, but no, my own personal, um, you know, uh, experiences, I've not actually uh, sandwiched ceramic fret between two pieces of glass but i have used it within igus or within shadow boxes yeah yeah uh, thanks for that answer um yeah it, i think i also agree with you better be safe <laughs> uh it's a lot of adhesion uh, uh issues uh that we need to ask uh, when we start doing that um to dr huang um it's from marcel and he asked uh, regarding low E combination uh, that, that Dr. Huan had explained, will that affect the loop and distortion on glass facade? Uh, yeah, okay. So the colors, actually we can, you know, create any kind of colors you need for projects with any kind of coatings. So triple several low E, double several low E, single several low E, you can, we can have the similar colors, no problem. Because so we uh, actually we developed the million coatings. It's, you know, in China, um, every big project, so they need the individual colors. So <laughs> almost every day we work on the colors. So, you know, any kind of color brightness, you know, we can, no problem for us, we can, you know, create. And then for the, uh, you know, the distortions, distortions is mainly related to the, uh, actually the thickness, you know, the thickness of the glass, especially outer glass. And of course the uh, processing quality in like a uh, tempering, you know, or the heat strengthening and during the, you know, the uh, heat up and cooling process. So we have to control, control the quality in the, the as, as well. As better as good as possible, you know, to reduce the roller waves or warpage, you know. And the roller wave or the warpage is a cause of the distortion. But uh, you know, the mainly the main reason, you know, the, for the distortion on facade, you know, just uh, the, it's depend on the thickness. Actually, the thicker the better for the, for the glass appearance. So of course the reflectivity has some you know effects. The higher the reflectivity, we could you know say you know more obviously the uh, distortions. Uh, but actually the coatings you know has uh, especially for this you know on the facade. The another problem is the stress pattern. You know after the heat processing, every glass has stress patterns. But if it if it's obvious or not. You know, by human eyes, it's the on the coatings. So the coatings has some, you know, effect on the stress patterns. Some coatings obvious, some others is better. So, so actually, uh, for the uh, uh, any any kind of col colors, any kind of coatings, so we can, you know, because we do projects all, all over the world in different locations in the projects. So for us, there's no problems, but it only that, especially for the stress pattern, you have to uh, more careful, more careful study because in the different locations, 
the background light is different. So if it's obvious or not, it depends on background light. So when you do project, huge projects, it's better to uh, uh, you know to uh, install the uh, uh, markup you know, samples on on the project side to evaluate if it's um, the stress stress pattern is okay or not. You know, for distortion of properties, what you just you know the, if the glass is thick enough and the quality control is good enough, there's, there's no problems. Yes, uh, I think that was a good answer. Thank you, Dr. Huang. Indeed, uh, yeah, I also agree. Most of the time, is uh, the roller waves causing the distortion. Um, thank you. Uh, I shall have uh, another question for um, Dr. Uh, for Melvinder. Um, so, uh, Justinus, uh, he asked, is there any PVP for Lemmy glass for building use to cut infrared? Uh, similar to IR cut for Lamy glass? Uh, well, I think uh, this is uh, largely uh, um, done by uh, making use of uh, a performing glass. Uh, the coatings are actually more helpful uh, to achieve this function. So currently the there is no technology which, which can actually make the interlayers uh, cut the IR radiations. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, hope that answers your question. I was also, it was also a very interesting question. So uh, for me, uh, if, if there is, we, I also like to get one. Uh, the next question is from Veronica, also to Malvinda. Uh, she's asking that uh, we are doing escalator enclosures instead of using laminated glass. Is it possible to use monolithic glass with safety film that goes into the bite of the frame? So that means the the film goes into the bite of the frame as well. If you use uh, some type of, uh, uh, I guess when she says uh, the the film, it is a kind of polyester film which is applied onto the glass surface. Uh, am I right? Yeah, we yeah presumably is some safety film. Um, yeah, one of those uh, uh, yeah, safety films in the market. Yeah, so such kind of films, uh, these are generally applied onto the glass surface as a retrofit measure. Um, I have seen such films uh, being used by the developers whenever some safety incident happens. And uh, uh, after that, uh, they they adopt this, uh, the cheapest way to make the glass safer. But actually you can, uh, end up making the glass more unsafe because what happens in this case, uh, if there is uh, a breakage of the glass there the in, uh, with an impact, the entire piece of glass can actually come down falling. So uh, compared to the case when you have uh, a, um, you know, just a monolithic glass, a fully tempered glass. So there the, you will have small uh, clusters of glass falling down. But in this case, when you're applying the film, the entire piece will actually fall on somebody's head. Yeah. And another thing is, uh, I have seen that kind of films being used uh, uh, in, in many places. Um, the durability of th those films is a big question mark. And over a period of time, they have uh, a tendency to come off the glass surface, especially from the corners. Um, so uh, they have, these are actually no match to, uh, 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 to a laminated glass. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Melvin. And I think there's uh, one more point that is, uh, if it's laminated glass, there's two pieces. So one breaks, the other one's still standing, right? So yeah, yeah that, that's still one uh, one other thing. Okay, um, one more question that's uh, from Marcel. Uh, he's asking, what's the total thickness of Sentry bulletproof glass? Well, uh, it depends on uh, what type of bullet you are trying to stop. Um, I can, uh, uh, in my presentation, I mentioned that with uh, the uh, advanced interlayers like sentry glass and spall shield, you can actually make the glass constructions uh, by uh, lighter by 15 to 20 percent. Uh, I can just say uh, like for uh, BR6 uh, threat level, um, uh, as per the e EN1063 standard, the um, the bullet construction that is uh, required to stop that bullet is just 37.9 mm thick uh, compared to um, the 70 mm thick glass construction that is uh, uh, required for, uh, um, you know, 
when you have uh, standard conventional materials like polycarbonate and you're trying to achieve the nose pol solution. So nose pol solution is uh, achieved by different uh, uh, methods. One of the methods which is very aggressively promoted by glass companies is uh, like they are promoting more glass on the uh, protected sites because uh, you know, glass is, is cheaper compared to any other uh, uh, like polymeric interlayers like, uh, like the PET film that we use. But uh, if you use that solution, you end up uh, having a like big uh, bulky glass construction, which is 70 mm thick. Yeah. So one of the glass companies, uh, I won't name, so they are promoting uh, uh, 70 mm thick uh, BRG construction for, for uh, BR6 level. So compared to that, our solution is just 37.9 mm thick. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Malvinda. I uh, hope that answers your question. Um, I think there's one more question for uh, Gero and Val uh, Valerie uh, from Takashi Kawaguchi. His question is uh, quite technical. It says, uh, what's the gutter splicer design at head section between curtain wall panel units for previous tests in laboratory? According to the movie of stack joint behavior, the gutter splicer is splitted, splitted type. If we adopt continuous gutter splicer between curtain wall panels, What's the major difference of panel behavior and structure sealant behavior to seismic load compared with compared to splitter gutter splicer? Right. I think if I understood it correctly, so it's talking about so on your gutter splices and your stack joints, right? There will be mm -hmm. some gutter splices, and uh, and the assumption is that on that presentation, I think Valerie, the one that we showed on that movement, is yeah. that it was a suspension split uh, uh, splice or basically something like that and that versus where and it's continuous i think this is the question right yes yes i think so yeah. too <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah uh, there are actually quite some details on the, the exact setup in in the paper that is referenced on the on the slide and that we can share later on uh so you will see all the measurements uh exactly how, how it was done yeah i think the answer is uh, you know the the best will be just to to we will share that paper where we can have a more detailed answer to that question. Uh, they can show the set, they can see the setup on those all of those uh, you know all of those movies that we showed a while ago. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's very good. Of, uh, that's very nice of you to share the paper, and I think with the paper you should uh, shed a lot of light on how it's done. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, I think that's that's all.